Hi guys, it's Vlogtober the 17th, 18th? It's, it's in Vlogtober. Um, today's video is something that I sort of... I watched a video of one of my favourite YouTubers, Swoozy06, um, and he was talking about suicidal thoughts. And it annoyed me. And I was like, because I feel like his video really focused on his experience of suicide and what that looked like and the suicides that he'd experienced among his friends and that he'd heard about and they were I guess not my experience of suicide so I guess what I'm trying to say is that he's not wrong he's just not right for what I perceive suicide to be he spoke about and um, I'll put the link for his video in here um, he talked about, you know, he had a friend who took too many drugs and as part of this psychotic episode he was in, jumped off a building and killed himself. Um, he talked about a friend that he, that he had who was a police officer who came on a scene and um, this guy had a fight with his girlfriend and shot himself. Um, and that he, you know, lived for quite a bit afterwards and had to deal with like the effects of like the fact that he shot his, you know, his back of his head away. Um, and another guy that he know, knew that jumped off the building of a hospital because of bullying, um, and off the roof of a hospital because of bullying, and lived for like another two days with every bone in his body broken. Suicide, he, and he's quite right when he makes his point, suicide isn't an end point necessarily. It's not a, a, you know, a switch that you flick. You've committed suicide and it's done now. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, that that's, you know, really valid from that point of view. And he talked about his own experience of, you know, having this, finding out that a girl was cheating on him. And he went home and was angry and had reckless behaviour and considered killing himself. And he didn't. And the next morning he woke up and he's like, right, well, actually I'm just going to get into God. And that's what he did. And his life just turned out really, really differently. Um, I guess... To start with, I should give you guys some backstory about me. Um, when I was 12, I was self-harming already. I didn't understand what that meant, and I couldn't have told you where I heard about how to do it or anything like that. It's it's something that I was doing um, to punish myself or because I, didn't, I just didn't like myself. It wasn't all the time. It started out as pinpricks, you know, in my thighs and moved on a little bit as time went on to different things that I would do to hurt myself. Um, like, and it wasn't, you know, cutting wasn't something that was in my frame of reference at that age. Um, it was other stuff, like I would burn myself or drop heavy things on my foot or my hand. Um, but when I was 12, I was an advanced reader and I had my first experience with suicide in a book and I thought about it and I was like, that's what I want to do. I don't want to live anymore. There's an option here. We don't just have to wait for death. We can make it happen sooner. It was a new idea to me. And being a good little Christian girl in a Christian home, I was aware that that wasn't, you know, the, the right thing to do and that there were, you know, steps and I had to try not to do that. And so, you know, self-harm continued. Um, I was a bit older when I had my first attempt. It didn't go very well. Um... But, yeah, basically, the next big life point for me is when I was 17, um, and I moved out of home, and I started attempting suicide more frequently, and my attempts were bigger and more organised. Um, I should say that I was trying to get help. I really was. I was talking to my parents about it as best I could without... I didn't want to upset them, make them think that it was their fault. Um, and I was trying to get help. I was going to see counsellors, you know, going to have regular meetings with the pastor to talk about stuff. Like, I was really trying and nothing was working. And, yeah. Um, so, after that, um, so, and I was living, I had a flatmate at the time, and she would, and I had a couple of friends who'd, like, catch me and stop me, but, and, like, make me promise never to do it again, or they'd call the ambulance, I'd say, no, I promise, I promise, I promise, I'll never do it again, I'll never do it again, I was just, you know, no, I would do it again. Um, it would, it was strange, actually, like, I would do it when I knew that my father was not going to be home and was away for a couple of days, and she'd come home early in the middle of it, like, it was so bizarre, like, I can't explain how many times God saved my life, because... Seriously, yeah, 
I don't want to go into that too much. I'm trying to focus on what I'm talking about. Um, so when I was 20, I spent eight hours, I, go, I went into a psych ward for a week and as a bit of respite because I was really scared and I came out. Um, then I went and visited my aunt in Port Hedland for a while to sort of get away to see if that would help. And then when I came back, I tried. I really tried. I spent eight hours one night in accident and emergency saying, I'm going to kill myself. I don't want to kill myself. Please help me. Eight hours to prove that I was serious and I wasn't just going to run away and I wasn't just attention seeking. And after talking to me, the psych register was like, well, you seem pretty normal and you seem pretty switched on and have an appointment for next week and we'll see you later. Two days later, I had the big suicide attempt that I talk about as being the life-changing suicide attempt that my sister prevented me from actually killing myself. She interrupted me and stole half my pills. I had a variety of pills that I'd stashed and the ones that she took were largely potassium tablets. If I'd been allowed to keep those, there would have been no coming back. My heart would be irreparably damaged. Um, anyway, so I took as many as I still had. Slammed down some liquid and ran at the house. I went and hid in the bushes. I hid underneath a blackberry bush and I was hidden from the path and you couldn't see me and I, and I remember drifting off and I remember the sun and I remember just that shifting feeling that you get when you fall asleep and I remember thinking, thank you God, this is what it feels like to die, thank you. And I remember just loving God so much in that moment. I remember feeling so at peace and like everything was finally okay. I don't know how to explain the next part to you, but I wasn't found on the path. I was so I was found on the path, which I wasn't anywhere near. I don't know how I got there. Um, if I had stayed where I was, I probably wouldn't have been found for quite some time. Um, and so I went into the psychiatric ward again, and I was there for a whopping three months. Yay! Um... After that, I was moved to an assisted care facility um, that was Christian run, and it changed my life, and I was healed at 21, which is not to say that I've never self-harmed since then, and it's not to say I didn't relapse really badly and have to be re-healed, um, but yeah, I mean, I it's not like I've never self-harmed again. It's not like I've never had suicidal thoughts again, and it's like I've never struggled again. It's just that I was never that sick again in that place where there was no other option for me. I'm sorry this video is really long already, but I haven't even really got to the point yet. Um, I guess the two arguments that I've been hearing a lot of lately is suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, and that suicide is selfish, and that suicide prevention is selfish. I want to tell you a bit about my like a bit about this from my perspective, and I'm sorry if this comes across as judgmental or mean or uneducated or anything like that. It's just my opinions, and it's big disclaimer on this, I'm really open to talking about it. And a bit more about myself if you are interested in my story and what was going on for me and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so suicide is selfish. And I absolutely agree with this perspective in a couple of situations. One is you lose your job and you commit suicide. I don't get that. I'm sorry, your family still has to deal with the debt and the loss and everything else. I don't know how that's helping anyone. That's kind of selfish because you still have the ability to get a job, just maybe not in Wall Street anymore. Um, you might not have the life you're accustomed to, but you need to tell your family that you lost your job. They would rather have you and no money than not have you and have no money because those are your options. The other one is when you're in high school and your boyfriend or girlfriend wakes up with you and you decide that you have to kill yourself. That's selfish. I don't understand that at all. That's ridiculous. And what's worse is when people go, I'm going to kill myself because of you. It's like, well, no, you're killing yourself because of you. Because you, you lack the resilience to deal with the situation. Lack the resilience to deal with this situation, sorry. So, yeah, you can get help. Those are temporary situations. And that's a big permanent solution. Don't do that. No. Um, on the flip side, we have suicide prevention is selfish. And then you've got, you know, that's really for me... 
that's where euthanasia sort of comes in. And I don't know where I stand on euthanasia, and I really struggle. My grandmother is really for euthanasia. And if she gets any sicker and has the ability, she will kill herself. And I love my grandma. She's probably my favourite relative that's not sort of in my immediate family. She's amazing, and I'm going to be her one day when I grow up and get old and crotchety. And she wants to kill herself if she gets any sicker. And I don't know. I don't know where I stand on that. I don't know where I stand on... You know, one of my friends dying in hospital at the moment of cancer really, really, really slowly and painfully. You know, euthanasia, I, I don't think, I think that maybe in that case it's selfish because they should have the right to choose how it sort of ends, I guess. They know it's ending, it's just when, but then it's still, is it still suicide? I don't know. And I have an example of this as long-term mental health issues and I think this is where the person who originally said it, that I heard it from, was coming from, you know, because this person has a long-term health issue. Does that mean that, like, they're choosing to end their suffering? Should we just let them? Dunno. Is it a temporary situation and a permanent solution? Yeah, in a lot of cases it is. In my situation, I don't know what the answer to that is. And my sister and I have been talking about it a lot lately. I wasn't being selfish. I tried really hard and I was being a burden on my family. I was costing them money and I was away, like I was not living and I was really miserable. I wasn't even miserable, I was just not connected to anything. I was hurting my mother every time I saw her because I didn't want her to touch me at all. I couldn't handle it. I was upsetting my family. I was causing big issues. I honestly had really good reasons. It might cost $5,000 for my funeral, but then they could stop paying everything else. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is to that. I know that you can't put a financial price on emotions. I know that if I died at that point in my life, I would have been okay with it. And honestly, I think that my family would have moved on by now and that they would be okay with it and that they would have understood and that it would have been okay. It wouldn't have been brilliant and they would have moved on. They might miss me, but I think they would have been okay. And I still stand by that. And my sister will probably punch me right now if she watches this because she would disagree with me vehemently. Honestly, yeah, I think they would have been okay. What I don't think is okay is if that never ended. If I was still that sick and I've been stopped, I would have tried again and again and again because that wasn't life. But the flip side is, if I died, I would never have gotten better. I would never have the life that I have now. Never have discovered Tumblr or the magic of the internet past DeviantArt and my moody, moody poetry. Don't look for it. Um, I wouldn't have gotten married. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't have the joy in my life that I have now and the friends that I have and the experiences that I've had that have been so formative. And the lives that I've touched with my story wouldn't have been touched. I don't know. I always said that if God was going to keep me alive, he better have a good reason. <laughs> he better use these experiences. And he has to some extent, but not to the full extent that I would have, I would like, perhaps. I don't know, guys. I'm running out of time. It's a really long video. I don't have answers. I don't even really have a way to end it. All I can say is that I'm happy I'm alive right now. And even though I do have suicidal thoughts sometimes, and even really recently with my health issues, I've just thought I just don't want to live like this and it could just be over. <laughs> I've never been that close again, and I'm not going to because I have reasons to live and I don't think that my husband would be okay without me and maybe that's selfish and maybe that's wrong but I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that he would be. I don't know. I love my family and I love, my, I love the life that I have for the most part and I love the experiences that I've had and the people that I'm friends with. The quality of the life I have is different. The quality of the people in my life are really different and I wouldn't ever go back and I wouldn't exchange it for anything, and I'm so happy I'm here. I would love to know what you guys think about suicide in the comments, in video responses, or anything like that. And as I said, really happy to talk about my own experiences. I'm sorry this video is so long, but I think that you understand why it couldn't be a short one. Sorry, guys. Have an awesome day. Bye.